G'day, John and Anthony, or Anthony and John, for all the hot end. And today we're going to do a review on the Anycubic i3 Mega Full Metal Frame FDM 3D Printer. So the print volumes are 210 by 210 by 205 mil. Big enough. Uh, it's a single nozzle, 4 millimeter diameter. 0 0.4. 0 0.4. And a few things which I really like about this printer are that it is all metal. So the frame is actually all metal and there's no wiggle, there's no movement on there. And unlike the CR10, uh, this has dual, dual Z uh, lead screws. So the print is extremely stable at faster speeds and you're not going to get any of the tilting and the shifting that you can get if you've only got a single lead screw. Looks like a pickup truck, it's like very solid. Um, a couple of the other standout features of this is that you can see down here we've got a coloured touch screen which comes standard and that allows for really nice and easy quick um, access to your controls so you can access your temperature, your speed, it's got a filament in and a filament out setting, much like the features of the more expensive Zortrax. This will allow you to change filament at the push of a button just by clicking unload filament. It'll heat up the nozzle and then spit out your filament and then reverse when you want to reload it. Uh, another one of the key features to this, again, which is much like the Zortrax, is that it has a perforated, which I believe is a PEI, perforated bed. So there's no need to use any of your glue sticks, hairsprays, bubble gum or whatever else you use yeah, to make great. stuff stick. Yeah. Um, another fairly unique feature which isn't even on the Zortrax, sorry if I keep referring to the Zortrax, but this appears to have most of the features of a much higher and much more expensive printer. Uh, stock standard it has a filament sensor, which this is the first printer I think we've ever had that's got a, so. yeah. a filament sensor built in. Uh, so when your filament runs out, it will automatically pause the printer and allow you to pop in a new roll and continue printing. Um, the benefits of this are that all these little tiny bits of rolls of filament you got laying around the house, you can actually use them all up. We've all got them. So yeah, around the corner we got like 20 rolls of filament with a you know, a few meters left on them, this will be able to print them all up. Does that give you an audible signal as well, or just... Um, I think it does give you an audible beep, right. and then, it, not like a siren or anything, yeah. but it, it gives you an audible beep, and then it puts it into pause mode, right. and that allows you to come and then load in the next roll. Um, one of the other key features of this, which isn't on a lot of the other printers, is it auto-resumes on power-off. So if your power goes off, you can turn this back on again and it will resume where it left off. That, that, I love that feature, that's fantastic. So and that's got more, more use than just when the power goes off, like for instance at my place. <laughs> trip uh, over a power plug? Uh, well, yeah, you can trip over a power plug, but see my, my wife won't let me print overnight because the printers are too close to our bedroom. So I could just unplug it when I go to bed and then in the morning plug it back in again and away it goes. Correct. Yeah, I love it. Um, so they're the major features which set this apart from everything else on the market currently. So a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's not as big as a CR10 or whatever. Weigh up the features of what you're actually printing, how well it prints, and the extra functionality that these little touches give you over just a larger print volume. I was just thinking about this yesterday when I'm actually in the process of reviewing another printer. Uh, and it has the, um, I think it's a 200 by 200 build plate. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Um, and I have the FT5, which is a 300 by 300 build plate. Yep. And, like, really, have I ever used that extra 100 mil? I, I can't recall ever needing a build plate that big. Uh, well, you do if you're doing cosplay models and, like, helmets and full, oh, well, full, yeah, full yeah. wearable stuff. But day-to-day -day use most people aren't going to use the entire mm. massive build volume that some exactly. of the big printers yeah. have and you also need to weigh up that the extra power cost that's going to be using mm. to heat the much larger yeah. surface area which you're not even going to use yeah and the cost of the the 
bed heaters themselves are much more expensive. Yes. Than you get. And then the materials are used mm. to make it stick. You got to use oh, more yeah, of everything. Yeah, more of everything. Yeah. It's the height that's more important, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, with these little touches that they've put in standard, I think this is much better value than the CR10. I know you're going to shoot me down and say, "Oh, but blah, 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 blah. but you love the CR10." I do love the CR10. The CR10 is a fantastic printer, but that said, this gives you more functionality and more options. So that gives you more functionality to use up all your extra rolls of mm. filament, your scraps around. Like I'm printing now with um, 12 month old orb polymer PLA. Um, and that's just mm. been sitting there because I didn't know if I'm going to get a print out of it. Yeah. Bearing in mind, of course, that we normally print with Orarum filaments. Yes, um, we're now fairly exclusively using Orarum filaments, um, just due to the consistency we're getting. And they're local, and we like to support our local manufacturers exactly. where possible. Made in Australia. Yeah, so the Ararum is made in, uh, they've just moved. They're just in... Keysborough? Keysborough, that's yeah. right. So unlike a lot of the other manufacturers in Australia that sell filament, they, a lot of the other people just import a Chinese or an overseas brand and then just slap their own sticker on it. Mm. Ararum actually extrude from scratch everything in-house so they've got more control over the consistency and um, I think it gives you a better product that yeah, hasn't I've been in transit over the ocean and Araram ABS is is predominantly what I use now it's, it's perfect absolutely yeah. um, so as you can see here we're printing a benchy so I've only got that going at about 50 millisecond at the moment just to keep the noise down that's fast enough really well that's yeah I mean, a lot of people like to print really fast, but I think 50 is a good midway point so that you can get a excellent quality of the print. Um, and it isn't really that slow. The Zortraxes, I think, are 30? 30, 30 or 40, yeah. 30 or 40 millisecond, and they do that to give you the extra detail. Yeah. So if you look at some of these models, which I'll, I will do zoom-ins here so you won't be looking at me. That's a great model, isn't it? That's one of Jeffro's. So yeah, this is Jeffro's Colossus. And this is done with no supports at all. And this is done at 100 micron. All the detail is there. Um, it would have been a fairly long print at 100. Uh, yeah, that was 13 hours. Right. I did it at about 10% infill. Mm -hmm. uh, the Benchy came out one of the best benches I think we've ever done here. Yeah, it's a beauty. There's a couple yeah. of bits of stringing in there. I didn't take them out deliberately, just so you can see for yourself. Um, but just with a blowgun, that's going to get rid of them, or a hairdryer or something. The tiny little cobwebs in the middle, I'd give that a solid 8 out of 10, or 9 out of 10 even. Yep. All the details are there in the ridging, in the roof, yeah, you can the name it. on the back, yeah. and underneath. Uh, here is a Taurus bull that I printed just today, just to get an extra print for the uh, review. Just because I like the intricate detail that's on the back, this one did have supports, not that you could really tell, because it didn't really make a mess of it at all. Um, we've got the Prusa vase, which I like to do just to show that it doesn't have to be a Prusa. This prints awesome. I printed my first one of those the other day, it came out brilliantly. I know, doesn't it? And you can see the writing down the side is all legible. Yeah. Well, not that you can probably see, maybe on this camera. Uh, so it says uh, Prusa Research down the side. Mm. This model here is a unreleased model from uh, Jeffro, who owns Hex 3D. He does design, it's a design firm that can do, do custom models and print orders for, um, I don't know, government or anything really commercial uh, this was with supports um, and the only issue I had with this is inside the mouth the supports were a real prick to get out so I just had to use a uh, scalpel to get them out but other than that this is a perfect print yeah, it looks great doesn't it? so links to um, Jeffro and his patreon will be in the description and another print that I did this one is in PETG. This one's a honeycomb vase printed in Form Futura tea glass, I think they call it. Yeah, so this one's a Form Futura, and again, this one is nearly flawless. 
Um, now, we haven't mentioned the price. The retail standard price on this... Eight, nine hundred? Yeah. It's not the shopping network. <laughs> no free... What would you expect to pay? There's no free steak knives. Um, 350 odd US is about the going rate at the moment, and I'm sure I'll be able to give you a discount coupon to get it even a bit cheaper. Yeah, printers are just, they're just so much cheaper these days. They're, they're pouring them out, aren't they? Yeah, well, it's just the quality is getting better and better. The, the, there was a stage where there was a heap of really cheap and nasty Chinese clones, not necessarily just Chinese, but. Yeah. Uh, really cheap quality parts that were really rubbish printers. <coughs> E10. Uh -huh. Sorry. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> there are a few diamonds amongst the rough, and I think <laughs> this one is one of those. Um, we'll go through some of the features. I'll just adjust the camera and I'll show you some of the features of the printer itself. Alrighty, so with the touchscreen, in the menu here, it'll show you what you're printing file, 3dbenchy.g code. Uh, the time it's been printing, the progress, the temperature, bed temperature, all standard stuff. But this also shows you the coordinates where it's at, and that's how it remembers where it's up to when the power flicks off and on. Um, so as you can see here in the menu, just a simple touch. We can go through and adjust our speed settings on the fly. Uh, we can put our fan speed up, our print, print rates up, and then just hit OK, and that'll apply the settings obviously. Uh, you've got your language selection to go through all of the different languages. I think it's uh, English and Chinese, possibly. I'm not sure. I don't speak Chinese. Bed temperature, extrusion temperature. Uh, motors on and off, so when you're finished, you can disable the steppers to move it around without damaging anything. Status, which brings you back to the status screen. And then underneath setup and tools, you've got more options in here. So under tools, you can see you've got your normal home, you can move your axes one by one. In tools, you've also got your cooling to tell it to cool off when you're finished, um, which is done by G-code anyway, so I don't really know why that's there. And in here, you can do your filament load and unload, which I can't do while it's printing. Uh, you can calibrate your touch screen here, and there's a bit of info about the firmware and everything you're running. It's also got the technical support email address on the printer at hand if you ever need it, which I haven't. Okay, so you can see also see the um, perforated bed. It feels to me like that it is P PEI. Um, I could be wrong, but it is a perforated PEI that everything seems to just stick to. Um, I haven't tried ABS on this yet but I will and probably do a follow-up on how it performs with ABS but PETG and PLA flawless just sticks just works. Now the, we didn't talk about the assembly was it pre-assembled? Ah uh, sorry yeah the um, the assembly it came flat packed so all you needed to do was on the side there are off memory two bolts here and two bolts here so this was up and running in uh, five minutes. That's great. Um, I didn't even level the bed, I just hit print, so obviously it had been pre-tested or pre-calibrated before I got it. So yeah, I didn't even le level the bed at all. Mm, great. It doesn't have auto bed leveling, but as you know from previous videos, we hate auto leveling. No. no. All of you people out there that have got auto bed leveling. Turn it off. Turn it off. The most, the most talked about topic on any of the channels that we do is I'm having trouble with my um, my sensor probe, my, my sensor probe, which I won't name, and uh, and bed leveling. Be all touch. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So I think getting your bed level to begin with is only the only way to go. Uh, if you want a good print, then you just have to get your bed level. Yeah. There's a link in the description to a previous video we did on how to level your bed. It is dead simple. This printer has nice big brass screws underneath. So it, it's a five minute job. I don't, I don't, yeah, don't understand. Um, oh, the, I should say the drive system is a Bowden extrusion, so your motor's over here, which pushes it, the filament through this tube into the hot end. Um, but I think this one pretty much, well, I think we're wrapped up. Yep. 
Uh, if you've got any questions about the printer, just let us know in the comments below. Um, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. It helps us a bunch. We are on our way to 14,000 subscribers. We're about 13 and a half at the moment. It'd be really nice to hit 20 by Christmas, but we'll see if you like the content. Let us know what you think of the dual format with us both here, having a bit of a ramble rather than just uh, some random person dribbling into the camera. <laughs> I thought it might be a bit more entertaining to have a little bit of a chat with a co-host whilst we're talking about the printer, so let us know what you think uh, of that. Hey, no, wait a minute, you're my co-host, oh, I'm not. <laughs> Sorry boss. <laughs> um, yeah, so let us know what you think in the comments below, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Yep, see you guys.